a super great big hello to all of our wonderful viewers and friends on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We appreciate all of our wonderful viewers and all of our wonderful friends that's on these uh, social media platforms. We thank you so much for viewing our videos, and thank you so much for that. May God richly bless you is our sincere prayer. Uh, I do want to ask everyone to please continue to keep me in your prayers. I appreciate everyone everyone who has been praying for me. Thank you so much uh, for having uh, me on your prayer list at home as well as at church, other places uh, where maybe you have prayer chains and prayer lists and things like that. Please, please, I encourage you to continue to keep us in your prayers. Now, uh, I guess maybe, what, a couple weeks ago, maybe something like that, I went for a uh, CT scan. I went for a CT scan without contrast and without dye and that CT scan uh, revealed uh, some issues uh, I think one of them and I'm still not too familiar with every detail concerning these things uh, but one of them I think was uh, something to do with they couldn't see the diverticula they seen some diverticula but they couldn't see it very well uh, due to a almost collapsed colon. That was the words that was used on the report, almost collapsed colon. And then there was something stated later on down in the report that said something about wall thickening in the transverse colon. I think I got that right. Hopefully I didn't mis mispronounce anything. But anyway, I appreciate everybody that's been praying for us and is praying for us. Please continue to do so. Keep us on your prayer list at home as well as at church. Uh, remember, send prayer in your prayer chains. Whatever you do, please continue to pray uh, for me. And I sure would appreciate that from the depth of my heart. Uh, now, my primary care doctor, my primary care doctor, got concerned about the part where that uh, they couldn't really see the diverticula due to the almost collapsed colon. And my primary care physician uh, said that they might have to remove some of my colon. That was the words that was used, that they might have to remove some of my colon. And so I've got an appointment. I've got an appointment. I believe it's the 22nd of October. Of course, this is 2024, October the 22nd, or I believe that's right. October the 22nd, I believe is when I go. I may be messed up on that, but I believe that's right. Anyway, I go to the surgeon, and uh, we did talk to the surgeon's nurse briefly on the phone, and she said that the surgeon said that he didn't think, he didn't think that I would have to have surgery, but uh, he won't know for sure, of course, till I go to him and he checks things out and all of that. So do pray for us. We appreciate everyone that has been praying for us. And we do ask that you would continue to keep those prayers a coming. All right. We want to do a quick devotion. Again, this is not teaching. This is not preaching. Our style of teaching, our style of preaching is so much different than what we've been doing in these videos. We've just been giving you a little devotional, and I hope they've been a blessing to you. Thanks everyone that reaches out to us. Thank y'all for giving us a follow on some of the social media platforms, subscribing to other social media platforms, whatever you do on the social media platform that you see this on. Thank you so much for doing that. Alright, First Peter chapter number 1. I know that we was just on Peter, but I want to go back to this. First Peter uh, chapter number one. I want to talk about our precious prom, our, our precious possessions, our precious possessions. We have five precious possessions that's recorded in the epistles of Peter. And in first Peter chapter one, verse number seven, the very first one that he mentioned is the trial of our faith. And he says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth 
though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So he compares the trial of our faith to gold that is tried by fire. And he said that the trying of our faith is much more precious than that of gold because gold perisheth. Anything that exists on this earth, it is temporary. But what we have is eternal. And so uh, he says that our the trial of our faith is precious and of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found pray unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of, of Jesus Christ. So the trial of our faith, now none of us, none of us, including myself, enjoys trials. None of us prays and says, Lord, would you send a trial to me today? I'm sure none of us prays that way. Uh, in fact, we try to avoid trials and we pray that the Lord would deliver us from temptations and deliver us from trials and things of that nature. Uh, but just as gold is put through the fire, after that it comes through the fire, it is made more valuable than it was before it was placed in the fire. The fire purifies the gold and makes it more valuable, more precious, and more sacred than it was before it went through the trine of the fire. So, uh, as, an, as a result of that, the gold is more valuable than it was before it went through the fire, which is a purifier, and it makes the gold more precious than it was before that it went uh, through that pressure and all of that and the heat. And so it is with our faith. Our faith, the trying of our faith, the trial of our faith is more precious, more valuable unto us and God than it was before that we went through it. So once we go through something, uh, it makes our faith, it makes it more precious than it was in the beginning. So this is one of the precious possessions that we have as the children of God, and that is the trial of our faith. Uh, after the heat and the pressure and the fire has purified us and we come through that, it causes us to be, our faith to be more precious and our faith to be more sacred. And, uh, we are more closer to God as a result of that than we were before that we went through the trial of the faith. And so I thought that was interesting. But then in verse number 18 and 19 of 1 Peter chapter 1, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, verse 19, but with the precious blood. So we got uh, the trial of our faith is more precious than that of gold. But in verse 19 of chapter 1, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So the trial of our faith is precious. But the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is a precious substance. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Our precious possessions, the trial of our faith is precious. The blood of Jesus that has redeemed us unto God is a precious substance because there is no sin in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood is pure and innocent. And so I'm thankful for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so his blood was shed so that we could be saved and born again and made a part of the family of God. Isn't that a great blessing? I believe it would be safe in saying that we are probably more precious than the very blood of God's Son because God's Son shed his blood for us. Now, you can't put a price on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very precious. It's, it's very sacred. But he shed that blood for us, so wouldn't that make us more precious or more sacred than the very blood of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ? 
we could go into a whole lot more detail concerning that, but we're just having a short devotional here. All right, in chapter 2 of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7, 1 Peter 2, verse 7, the trial of our faith, 1 Peter 1, 7, the trial of our faith is precious. 1 Peter 1, 19, the blood of Jesus is precious. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7, unto you therefore which believe, and I'm glad I'm in that category, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. Jesus is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. So the trial of our faith is precious. The blood of Jesus is precious. But Jesus himself, he is precious. <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6, what was it the prophet said? What is it? 700 years, seven centuries prior to his coming. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. I'm glad that Jesus is precious. In his birth, he is precious. In his sinless life, Jesus is precious. In his death, Jesus is precious. In his burial, Jesus is precious. In his resurrection, Jesus is precious. In my life, Jesus is precious in your life. Jesus is precious. Oh, there's so much I could say about that. Unto us which believe, he is precious. Jesus is precious. What a precious Savior he is. Oh, he's so precious. He saved us by his salvation. Who did that? The Savior. He delivered us by his deliverance. Who did that? The deliverer. My, he's so precious. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God within him. He who was rich became poor so that through his poverty we could become rich. The trial of our faith is precious. 1 Peter 1, 7. The blood of Jesus, 1 Peter 1, 19, is a precious substance. Jesus himself 1 Peter 2, 7, he is precious. 2 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 1. Listen to how Peter describes himself here in 2 Peter 1, 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So not only is the trial of our faith precious according to 1 Peter 1, 7, not only in 1 Peter 1, 19 is the blood of Jesus precious. 1 Peter 2, 7, Jesus himself, he is precious. But right here in 2 Peter 1, 1, we have precious faith. Not only the trial of our faith is precious, but our faith itself is precious. Grace belongs to God, but faith belongs to us, according to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved. Who does that grace belong to? It belongs to God. Noah found grace in the eyes of God, Genesis 6, 8. Revelation 22, 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. In between there, the word grace is mentioned many times. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved. Grace belongs to God. His grace is sufficient for every need. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Who does faith belong to? Romans chapter 12, verse number 3. God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. There is also a gift of faith in the nine spiritual gifts recorded in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. Faith belongs to us. When we take our human faith and we place it in God's divine grace, it produces salvation. Our faith is precious. Hebrews chapter 11, we call it the hall of faith. By faith, through faith, we see that many wonderful acts were achieved. God allowed a lot of great things to happen by faith and through faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. What is that? Uh, verse 1 of Hebrews 11. Verse 6, I think he said, uh, 
They that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Our faith is precious. Faith. Human faith is precious. What a precious substance that is. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oftentimes he would look at folks and he would say, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Faith is very powerful. Insomuch that he said, if you have the faith, you can look into this mountain and you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast sense into the waters and it should obey you. That's a literal mountain that he was talking about in that scripture. In fact, it's a mountain of transfiguration that he was talking about in Matthew chapter 17. All right. So the trial of our faith is precious. The blood of Jesus is precious. Jesus himself, he is precious. And our faith is precious. Verse 4 of Second Peter chapter 1. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The promises of God are precious. Second Peter 1 4 promises in this blessed book that God has made to you and I. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. The three I wills, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What is that? Isaiah 40 verse 11, I think. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10, I'm sorry. Back up to Isaiah chapter number 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Promises made to the children of God. Exceeding great and precious promises. So five precious possessions the children of God has in this devotional. First Peter 1 verse number 7, the trial of our faith is precious. First Peter 1 19, the blood of Jesus is precious. First Peter 2 7, he is precious. Second Peter 1 verse 1, our faith is precious. Second Peter 1 verse 4, the promises of God, they are yea and they are amen. And the promises of God, they are precious. A God that cannot lie hath made these promises before the world began. God bless you. We love you.